How can you create a question in the latest version of Lime Survey? For example, a question like this one, with different answer options and such a different field, where the respondents can then type something here. That's what I want to show in this video here, including all the setting options you have when creating such a question. Hi, my name is Paul Borsdorf. I am an authorized Lime Survey partner and offer services related to Lime Survey, such as survey creation, support and training. Okay, when we have created a new survey, it usually looks like this that there is already a question group and a first example question in it, and that's where we start right away. First of all, this example question that is in here is a question of the type long free text, and if I want to edit this now, then I go to edit here in the upper right corner and can then adjust the question type and also the question text and so on. Let's take a look at the most frequently used question type, namely a single choice, i.e. a question where the respondent answer options are given and then one of these answer options should be selected. So the first step here on the right side is to adjust the question type. As soon as I have clicked on the question type here, I get a selection of all question types that are possible here in Lime Survey. If you want to get an overview, you can just click on it here, then a small preview of what this question type looks like will be displayed. Okay, let's now select the most commonly used question type here. In the single choice questions, this is the list of radio buttons. This is what the question looks like with different answer options. Then I go to select here and see that this has been switched to list radio buttons. Then I can now adjust the question text here on the left side. So here is a first example question. Please answer the question. Of course, you can now adapt the text as you like. Then you can switch from the question text above to the help text above. It now says that this is a question help text. We can just leave that in now so that we can see where it appears in the question later. Of course, you can also adapt the text or simply take it out completely. And then we now have the answer option down here and at the beginning it looks like this, that we have a code here, AO01, and then we can enter an answer option here. I'll just type something like answer option 1. Exactly, and then we can adjust the code here. It now stands for answer option 01. I always recommend only entering numbers there. This has the advantage that when the data is exported, these codes are later recognized directly as numerical variables in the statistics software, for example if you use SPSS. So, if I want to add more answer options now, I can just go to this plus and then I can put another answer option in here, for example answer option 2. And then we'll do a third. By the way, if you want to, you can edit these answer options here as you like by going to this pencil icon here. Then an editor opens and then you can make all kinds of settings here. So you can then, for example, if you mark that, change the font here or the font size and so on. And you can also put all kinds of things here in the answer options. As an example, you can insert a video or an image. So, of course, you can now insert as many answer options as you like here via this plus symbol. Alternatively, you can also use this quick add here, which is helpful, for example, if you have a template, for example in Word, and all the answer options are already listed there. I'll show you an example. Assuming I have now copied from my Word table here, more answer options. This is what it could look like. Then I can now choose here whether the previous answer options should be replaced or whether these answer options should be added here. I choose add. So in addition to these 1, 2, 3, which I had before, I also have the answer options 4 and 5 in here. If you want to create many different questions that look similar, then you can also work with label sets here. For example, I could now save this answer option here as a label set and could then load this label set in further questions and would not have to enter this answer option again and again. Well, if you have entered everything so far, always remember to save in between and then you can go to the question preview and see how the question looks so far. A first example question, that was the question text, then there is this help text, then there is an automatically generated hint text from Lime Survey. Please select one of the following answers. If you don't want this automatically generated text here, you can also turn it off. I'll show that right away in the settings. So, then the respondents can select one of these answer options here and then continue in the survey. So, those were the most important basics for creating such a question. Now we come to all the settings. The first thing here is the code, which is set to Q00 by default in the example question. You can change it to Q1, for example, if you simply want to number the questions consecutively. This is helpful, for example, if you export the data to a statistics software and then use this code here as a variable name. 
We've just talked about the question type and we're going to go further down here, so let's take a look at all the setting options. There are the general settings here, then later comes logic, display and so on. I'll go through that step by step now. After the question type comes the question group. Here you can move the question within the survey. If you now want to move this to another question group, you can select it here. In this case, there is now only this one group of questions. Then you can turn on other here. By default, this is off. When I turn it on, I save it and go directly to the question preview so that you can see what happens. Another answer field appears here with the item other and there the respondents can then type something in themselves. You can also adapt this text for the other answer option. We'll get to that in a moment further down in the settings. Okay, after other comes the mandatory button. This is the setting of whether the question should be a mandatory question or not. By default, it's off. If you turn it on, respondents can only continue in the survey if they have answered the question. If you go to soft, there is this call. You have not answered a question here that is actually a mandatory question. Do you still want to answer them or do you want to continue? I'm showing that right now. I go to save here and then just preview the survey. Now I don't answer the question and go to submit and then this message comes here. One or more mandatory questions were not answered. If possible, please fill it in before proceeding to the next page. But then the respondents can still say to continue without answering. That's why it's called this soft mandatory question. Then we are at the conditions. The conditions are relevant if this question is only to be shown to a part of the respondents, for example those who have given a certain answer in a previous question. Then you can enter a specific condition here. You can also find several videos on my channel, if you want to take a closer look, the topic of conditions. Then you can encrypt the storage of the question, so it is stored encrypted within the answer table. This is relevant, for example, when requesting personal data in individual questions or, for example, in medical research. Then you can save the values that you enter here below in the settings as default values. So this would have the advantage if you later create further questions of this type, that you don't have to make all these settings again, but that these default values are adopted. However, this only refers to the other settings that are now coming below. Okay, then let's move on to the next point, which is logic. First of all, there is the item array exclusion filter and array filter. These are a bit more complex filter stories, so if you want to generate the answer options offered in this question from a previous question, I'll create another video about this when I get the chance. And then we have the item other comment is mandatory field. This means that the respondents are obliged to enter something in this other field when they have clicked. I'll show you what it looks like. I click on here, go to save and then we look at the questions again. Now it is like this, if I choose the answer option 5 for example, nothing happens. But if I go to other, then people are obliged to enter something here and it is also indicated here with a text. If they select other, please specify their selection in the corresponding text field. In this case, the respondents can only continue in the survey if they have actually entered something here. Then you can only enter numerically for other, i.e. if only numbers are allowed to be entered in this other field. Array filter type refers to the array filters again and then here we have the randomization group name. This is relevant if you want to display multiple questions in a random order. So suppose you now have three questions that are similar to this question here, then you can enter the same randomization group name here and then the questions in the survey will be displayed in random order. You can also find more videos on the topic of randomization on my channel. A question validation equation is there to somehow test the answer given here. For example, one could say that the answer given here must not correspond to the answer in another question. For example, you would write it in such a way that you say that the answer from this question, in this case Q1, must be unequal to the answer from another question, for example Q2. This is what a validation equation question could look like as an example. If the validation is not adhered to, i.e. if the same answer had been given in this case, a validation note could also be given here, which would then be displayed to the respondents if the validation is not adhered to. Okay, that was the point of logic. We'll close that again. Now we are at the point of display. Under the item display, you can first change the label for the other option. This means that this other field will be labeled differently. I'll enter something like additional information here and go to save here and we'll take a look at what it looks like. In the question preview, we can now see here that this free text field now says additional information instead of other. 
Then you can change the order of the answer options here. Usually it's in the order I typed it. Alternatively, you can do it in random order or alphabetical order. If you have a lot of answer options, you can enter the number of columns here. By default, it's a column. You can just spread it over several columns. I'll enter two here to show that as an example. Save and question preview, then this is now spread over two columns. Then you can hide the tip. This tip refers to this automatically generated hint that says please select one of the answer options. So if I turn this on to hide it, save it again and go to the question preview, then this hint is no longer contained here, but only this self-written help text and the actual question text. Always hiding this question doesn't make so much sense in this case, then you wouldn't actually see the question in the survey at all. This is more relevant for so-called equation questions, where you want to calculate something in the background. CSS classes are relevant if you want to define your own CSS class in the design template and apply it to this question here, i.e. only for those who want to program something with CSS, so to speak. Then we can set the position for the other option. So far, it was the case that this other option was displayed at the bottom, that's the default, but you can also say that it should now be displayed at the beginning or before a certain other answer option, for example. For example, I say after a certain answer option and can then enter the code for it here. I'll say now, for example, in the case behind the answer option 3. Save and ask preview. And then we see here now, we have the answers 1, 2, 3 and then comes this other answer option. Then there is the condition help for printable surveys. So if you want to print out a survey, and then give the respondents information about the conditions, i.e. the filters, then you can write something in here and then it will be displayed in the printed survey. Okay, so that was the point here add. Now we come to the point of other. There is not much coming there now. We can insert a page break in the printable version of the survey here, and we can set an SPSS scale type here. So if you want to export the data to SPSS later, you can say, I would like to set here already which scale type this should be. Then there is the timer here. This allows you to set that only a certain time is available to answer the question and you can enter a certain time limit here. You can then also enter certain actions, what should happen if the time is not kept, that you then simply move on to the next question and the like. If you are interested in more detail, I have also created a completely separate video about this. And then we have the item statistics. Here you can choose whether the answers to this question should be displayed here in the public statistics. Public statistics are a way to show respondents at the end of the survey how the answers have turned out so far. There you can also choose whether a diagram should also be displayed and if so, which diagram type it should be. So much for the question settings. That was all with the example of this type of question. Of course, there are a whole range of other question types. You can also find videos on my channel, for example on array questions etc. I hope the video was helpful to you. If you need further support, please feel free to contact me. My website is linked below.